Hello, and welcome to episode 38 of Weekly Gaming News 10 and 10. This episode covers the week ending December 16th, 2017. Nintendo's Switch has broke 10 million units sold in its first nine months. To put that in some perspective, the previous Nintendo system, the Wii U, sold just over 13 million units in five years. Microsoft's Xbox One sold 7 million units in its first 10 and a half months, and Sony's PlayStation 4 sold 13.5 million units in the first 10 and a half months. Both the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One had a holiday season included, whereas the Switch numbers does not include all of the holiday sales for this year. Party Chat could be coming to the Xbox mobile app. Currently, the Xbox beta app, available on Android only, is testing the ability to join Xbox Live parties. This will allow users to chat with their friends and Xbox parties from their phone, a convenient way to organize those comp matches. Capcom has unveiled the Street Fighter V Season 3 Fighters in the run-up to the January 16th Street Fighter V Arcade Edition release. Season 3 will have two new fighters and some grizzled veterans joining the roster. The two new characters are Falky and G, and they will be joined by Blinka, Cody, Sagat, and Sakura. Street Fighter V Arcade Edition will be a free update to current Street Fighter V owners, with the Season 3 characters being made available via the Season Pass or purchased with fight money. Crytek is soon a star citizen developer for Breach of Contract. Cloud Imperium Games, the developer of Star Citizen, the heavily delayed crowdfunded game, is being accused of the continued use of CryEngine after saying they were moving on to Amazon's Lumberyard. Crytek notes that marketing materials show lines of code indicating the game is still running on CryEngine. Complicating this is the fact that Lumberyard is a fork of the CryEngine that was purchased by Amazon. CIG notes that they haven't used CryEngine since switching to Lumberyard. This is only set to cause more delays to a game that has already been heavily delayed. Take-Two opens an indie publishing studio called Private Division. Take-Two describes it as a developer-focused publisher that empowers independent studios to develop the games that they are passionate about. Private labels start off with an impressive stable of games from a cra- Assassin's Creed creator and an An unannounced game from The Outsiders, a new studio started by a pair of DICE developers, a game from Halo co-creator Marcus Leto, and an unannounced game from Obsidian Entertainment, the developers of Fallout New Vegas. Ubisoft announced some 2018 delays on the heels of the success of Assassin's Creed Origins. Ubisoft noted that the decision to make these delays lines up with their strategic vision of developing more engaging and high-quality experiences. Also noting that the extended development time for Assassin's Creed Origins allowed the development team to fully express their creative vision. With that said, Far Cry has been pushed from February 27th to March 27th. The Crew 2 has been moved from March 16th to the first half of the next fiscal year, and an unannounced project has also been pushed back. Atari Box pre-orders were set to begin on this past Thursday, the 14th of December, but have been delayed. Set to be priced in the $250 to $300 range, Atari released a statement saying it's taken longer than expected to create the ecosystem and platform that their community deserves. No new date has been mentioned, nor has there been any details as to what the actual trouble is with the pre-orders. The Atari box will pack an AMD processor and run on a custom Linux operating system. There still has been no mention of game titles. The MPD group has released November sales numbers. The numbers are very interesting as PlayStation 4 moved the most units, but Xbox One generated more revenue, indicated that the $500 Xbox One X may have done pretty well. Both the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One had record months in sales and total game hardware revenue was up 28% for 2016, not in small part due to the popularity of Nintendo Switch. In software, Call of Duty World War II ruled the charts, followed by Star Wars Battlefront II, Assassin's Creed Origins, NBA 2K18, and Madden NFL 18. All in all, North American game industry sales increased by 30% year over year. Square Enix revealed launch roster for the upcoming Dissidia Final Fantasy NT. The game will launch with a 28-character roster to include favorites such as Cloud and Sephiroth of Final Fantasy VII. 
Titus Inject of Final Fantasy X, Noctis of the most recent Final Fantasy XV, Ramza of Final Fantasy Tactics, Lightning of Final Fantasy XIII, and Final Fantasy III Villain Cloud of Darkness, amongst others. In an odd crossover that makes sense, the Predator invades Ghost Recon Wildlands. In a free update to Ubisoft Ghost Recon Wildlands, players will be able to, for them at a time, hunt the famed Predator. Started on December 14th, this past Thursday, and running through early January, players will be able to hunt and take down the famed movie creature. This content can be tackled solo or co-op with up to four players. Success will earn players exclusive Predator-themed items. There's also a Predator pack available for purchase via the in-game store, which will contain 15 new customized items, including movie-inspired weapons, a cool, a cool crossover that feels right at home for both IPs. That will close this week's episode of a Weekly Gaming News 10 and 10. Before I go, I want to remind you to get good at fighting games with the new challengers. Offering one-on-one -on -one and group coaching, fight nights, breakdowns, and more, the new challenges is a place to go. Supporting Street Fighter V, Injustice 2, Tekken 7, and Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, pick your game to rule. Head over to thenewchallengers.gg for more information and to sign up. Finally, if you'd like to get a detailed discussion on these stories and more, join Trinell and I on a weekly gaming news show. Stream live on Sundays at 7 p.m. Eastern on Facebook, Mixer, Twitch, and YouTube.